because we're in the middle of nowhere, a lot of the best solutions to this problem are not available to us. So. Este is solamente primer or como es? Uh, how do I say? He's gonna sell me this. It like used to be pickles or something. I don't know. Oh my gosh. And I've got to be really careful not to just cut a hole in the bottom of the cockpit. Previously on Project Atticus. After spending three years refitting our fixer-upper sailboat, we left the United States with only $2,000 and the goal of working while we cruised. We made it as far as Isla Mujeres, Mexico before we ran out of money and had to find work. For the next year, we did freelance boat repair jobs until we saved up enough cash to cast the lines and sail south to explore the Western Caribbean. For the past couple months, we've been working hard on boat projects in Bocas del Toro, Panama, to prepare Atticus for her biggest challenge yet, crossing the Pacific Ocean. All right, good morning. So, we have got our new mast bases, which are made out of the heaviest wood on Earth, which is exciting. Uh, so the next step is going to be to uh, take our old mast heels and reinstall them into our mast extrusions. My plan today was to just lather this bad boy up in Lana coat, which is basically just like a real greasy substance. And I started chatting with a couple of riggers and people who have been working on boats for a long time. And they started to really uh, impress on me that this aluminum, it's completely lost its anodizing. And it could potentially start corroding a lot, you know, in just the next couple of years. Sounds like I should probably take some more aggressive steps to try to mitigate the potential corrosion. So because we're in the middle of nowhere, a lot of the best solutions to this problem are not available to us. So, you know, we could have it re-anodized. We could uh, bead blast it to prep the surface without contaminating it uh, and then prime it and paint it. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that are possible, but they're just not realistic for us to do here. I've come up with a plan that's kind of a compromise, and that is I'm going to go into town and see if I can find some kind of an aluminum etch primer, uh, and that's basically going to make it so that other stuff can adhere to the aluminum well, uh, and then I think I'm just going to coat it with epoxy. It'll start corroding eventually, but it'll just buy this thing more time, which is all you can ever do with boats. Here I thought I was going <laughs> to bang this project out, but now I'm going to be going on a adventure into town. Here we go. <laughs> okay, here we go. First hardware store. Fingers crossed. In our experience cruising developing countries, particularly remote regions, construction workers, professional painters often use less than ideal products. This generally results in a less durable outcome, but it can be the most cost-effective way of doing business in an area that lacks the proper resources. Uh, Se si vende uh, primer para aluminium. So if you want to use high-quality products that will result in a long-lasting finish, you're probably going to have a hard time finding those products as they're just not readily available and nobody right. uses them locally. Se vende uh, like zinc chromate? Mm, no. No? The best way to paint metal is a multiple step process with several different products. This paint that he's showing me now is kind of an all-in-one solution and so it's just not a very high quality product and won't last very long at all. Okay, gracias. Okay. Well, no dice with the first door. Let's try number two. Estoy buscando uh, primer para aluminium metal. Ah, creo que sí. ¿Y este es solamente primer o es uh, 
pintura también. Como es? Uh, how do I say? Uh, este es primer y uh -huh. el otro es el pintu la pintura, uh -huh. o este es toro. Lo siento, mi español es muy mal. <laughs> si vas a pintar, uh -huh. solamente esta. Uh -huh. Okay. Gracias, amigo. Yeah. 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 This is not an etch primer or like an epoxy primer. This is actually just like an anti-corrosion paint that has an aluminum finish. So it just looks shiny. <laughs> uh, and it even says here, make sure that you apply a coat of primer to the metal before this. So it's the kind of thing where like you could paint this on metal and it would help, it'd be better than nothing. Ideally, this is not what we'll use. Well, gotta go, bud. Well, it didn't go very well at first, but once I got to the marina, I was chatting with one of the guys here. He's gonna sell me this. What is this? This is that? a jar. It like used to be pickles or something. I don't know. Oh my what. gosh. And now it says, you know, like on printed paper with tape, zinc chromate. <laughs> Oh, this is labeled. Primer yellow for industrial <laughs> use only. Huh. Anyway, so. And how old is it? He said it was like nine months old, I think. Huh. So it's not new. Anyway, I'm going to stir this thing up and see if it's still liquid, yeah. first of all. <laughs> and if so, I mean, I might just give it a go and just kind of brush it on. I just hope it's actually zinc chromate and not mustard. Because <laughs> <laughs> it kind of looks like it could be. All right, well, I think this stuff is, I mean, it, it at least stirred up nice. So, I mean, I'm gonna try and paint this stuff on. I've just gotta kinda prep the heels a little bit. Um, I'm gonna scrub them real good with a uh, kind of a metal Scotch-Brite pad, as well as really clean them up with some acetone. So, yeah, let's, let's scrub these bad boys. Okay, I got the heels nice and clean and looking relatively shiny. And got my mustard, I mean zinc chromate. All right, so I got the zinc chromate primer on. I think that this is a zinc chromate primer, as in that it's actually like a primer paint designed to go on relatively thick. Unlike the sprayable zinc chromate, which is supposed to go on real thin, and then you put a primer on top of that. So at the end of the day, we're doing what we can, right? There's things that would be better, but we're doing what we can, and I think these are gonna last a long time. All right, good morning. Well. Man, yesterday I just did not get nearly as much done as I wanted to. I spent most of the day yesterday just researching what options we had and then talking to different people and thinking about one option and then changing my plans. In our first refit, I realized that 80, 90% of any job is prep. And so painting, you know, 90% of the job is just gonna be sanding. With stuff like these masts, I didn't realize that the same rule applied, that 80, 90% of a job like this is just sitting down and trying to decide what your best course of action is, given your resources and what's possible. I know Lynn and Larry Party in one of their books said that one of the most important things to have when building a boat is a good thinking chair. And it's totally right. So yesterday, I just cleaned up and prepped the uh, inside of the extrusion. So now I'm gonna get ready to prime it. But before I get into that, Worth here is gonna help me out. He's got one of those big, what do you call it? A big- It's just a variable speed grinder. Yeah, but a big diameter one. And so he's gonna flatten out the uh, bases or the bottoms of the extrusion so that it's gonna mate with the heel well. So hopefully. hopefully. Well, thanks, Worth. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. So 
the next step is to move forward with our mast bases. So there's a couple of concerns with these wood mass bases. This wood is super strong, it's super dense, it's super heavy, uh, but even really strong heavy wood is susceptible to rot. This female slot is a big concern for rot because if water were to work its way under the mast heel and into that slot and just sit there, the wood could rot, soften up, and then the mast could conceivably break out from the base. Then the other thing that we're concerned about, this wood most likely was not allowed to dry long enough because it's so thick, it takes longer to dry properly. So that presents a lot of problems sealing the wood because if we completely seal it with either paint or fiberglass or whatever, that moisture is going to try to escape. And as this thing gets hot, the force of that heated moisture pushing out is actually really great. And so it would blister or crack the paint. The expansion and contraction of the wood would delaminate the fiberglass. Now, luckily, one of our patrons, Jim Ulmer, contacted us the other day. Um, he owns a machine shop called Ulmer Machine Company in Richland, Mississippi, which is right outside of Jackson, Mississippi. He told us that uh, he could probably make us some bases out of aluminum. So we've been working with him the last couple days to design them and get all the parameters spot on. He's been super knowledgeable and helpful. Hey, Jordan and Desiree, it's Jim Ulmer and Todd Ulmer with Ulmer Machine Company. And these two pieces of aluminum are fixing to be turned into a mass step for Adam. considered this option before because, to be honest, it's just totally outside of our price range. Uh, but Jim wanted to help us out and do this as a way to help support the project. So we are insanely grateful. So if you guys are in the Jackson, Mississippi area and you need some machining done or shoot, you just want to go over and give him a high five, go say hi to Jim for us. For us, that means that we're going to have to wait another two weeks to receive those bases. So that means that the next project is going to be removing the old bases. When we installed them, I put epoxy under them and epoxied them to the deck. Hopefully, I'll be able to chisel this thing off the deck without damaging the deck. So just the hammer and the chisel isn't gonna do it, and I had a feeling that that would be the case. So it's time to bring out the big guns. I've gotta be really careful not to just cut a hole in the bottom of a cockpit. <laughs> I think that's gonna work. We're pretty much ready for the new mass bases. So I've just gotta clean up all this fiberglass and oh man, I'm starting to itch. It's been a while since I've got that fiberglass itch. All right, it is a new day. The primer has cured on the inside of the mast as well as on the mast heels. So it's time to install these bad boys. As we insert this, some of the primer is gonna rub away, but I think there's gonna be at least some of the primer that remains over the entire surface of both 
the mask and the heel. So I think this is gonna work really well. So these mass bases are done. So we got four bolts holding the heel to the extrusion. And then we got this drain hole here and that's a 3 8 inch hole. So that way, whenever we rinse or wash the boat, I can just flush the inside real good, pretty regularly. We've been doing this for a couple years now and big projects like this still get me really worked up. You know, I was terrified to cut the bases off of the mast and make the whole rig shorter. And I mean, it just, it seemed like such a daunting, complex problem. And I heard a quote the other day that I really liked that uh, problems appear bigger than they really are when you're right up next to them, when you're real close to them. I think something that I'm realizing is that there's just about no problem on a boat that you can't solve if you just take a step back Give yourself a minute, really think about the issue, try and get advice from people that know more than you or who have been through the same thing. Put a plan together and just start to take steps forward. So hope you guys enjoyed the episode and if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss next week's episode where Desiree and I lift this thing up with our bare hands and put it back on Atticus and sail for the Marquesas. All right, we'll catch you guys next week. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this week's episode. We wanted to thank some of our deckhand level patrons. So we've got Danny and Sarah Morris, Juan and Iris Riva, Hugh Van Dyne, Michael and Maureen Price, Bruce Obinor, and Burned Hackstein. We've also got Toby David Duncan and Think Travel Eat, Captain Susan Smith and Seth Lakowski, Toby Vanderbeek and Courtney Rennie, and last but not least, Marguerite Cashman. Thank you guys so much for your support. It means the world to us. Without it, we would not be able to put so much time and love and energy into these videos, so thank you. And other than that, we will see you guys next Thursday.